Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. I had a real interesting question come through where someone was asking me the length of a string and when we can use it and it was more related to a keypad, but it got me wondering. I've never sent long strings between the Nexion and the Arduino, and I was kind of wondering what the limitation would be on that. So this video is just going to go over that a little bit. I'm going to use the get command to send the string from the Nexion to the Arduino, but instead of starting the get from the Arduino, I'm going to use it as a command in the Nexion. In the Nexion display, I only have one thing on the display itself, and it's just a number field. And that's just so we can keep track of the length of the string that we're sending to the Arduino. And then on the Arduino, I'm going to print out the length of the string that we're receiving. And then that way we can see if there's any errors or any discrepancies between the two. I'm going to send the string every five seconds. And then that, that five seconds will allow me a little bit of time to talk so it's not coming in too quickly. I'm going to use two different scenarios for sending the data. I'm going to use this VA0 variable field set up as a string to send the data. And we're going to send it for the first scenario. We're going to start it being blank. We're going to set the max length of it to be 8,000. I originally thought, let's make it 65,000 and see what happens. But the problem is when I, when I run it like that at 65,000, and we do a quick compile, down here you can see that we run out of memory because our available memory is only 8,192. So then I decided to set it at 8,000, and if I made it to 8,000, I could tackle that later, and we'll see what happens. You'll see that I don't make it to 8,000. Now when I run compile, it makes it because I haven't set that value so large. We won't be using VA1 and VA2 until the next test that we run through. So all we're going to use is the timer. I have both already in there, and I'll just uncomment and comment as needed. But for the first test, every five seconds, we're going to add five sets of, of five A's to VA1, and we're going to print it. So the first time through, we're going to send 25 A's. And then every five seconds, it'll be 50, 75, and 100, and we'll just see what happens. Now, instead of sending it in print S, I'm using the get, because when we use the get, it will add the last three FFs to the string, and we can use that to collect the data. And in my standard Nexion template that I have, I already check for that in case I get an error message or something from the Nexion. And then we're going to populate this N0 with the length of the string of VA0. And so that way we'll keep track of the length of VA0 as we send it to the Arduino. So it's a pretty simple setup. I'll run it in debug now and show you on the serial monitor. And you can see it changed to 30. Not sure why it went to 30 and 55. I must not have deleted the AAs all the way through. But if I change this to a string and I reset this, you can see this YYY at the end, which is actually FFF or FFFFFF. And then that's going to signal the Arduino that the string has been sent, because otherwise, we're not going to know when the end of the string is in the Arduino without some sort of a key. Because if we just look for an A, there's going to be a ton of them. I'm going to close this and open the Arduino next. Now in the Arduino, it's the exact same setup that I always use. I've got my variables up here. I configure my software serial. I'm using a Pro Mini on this, and that affects some things as you'll see down the road. And then I have my two serial ports, one to connect to the to this the Arduino IDE, and the other one to control to the Nexion. And then in my main loop, every time the Nexion sends the data on serial two, we're going to collect it in this data from display. In this case, we're sending a whole bunch of A's, and we're just going to keep collecting them until, until the Arduino has some sort of signal to reset that DFD to empty. We're not going to use the asynchronous delay in this one, we're going to use this if loop down here to do the work. I'm going to comment this out right now. I'll leave it in for now. We'll print out the DFD. 
So you'll see what we get, and that's only when the end character, or when the string, ends with those three FFs. And that's what this is up here. We create this end character, which is three characters of FF, FF, FF. And then when we get that, we'll print it down here. We'll display the length of the string that we have, or the DFD string. And then we are going to reset the DFD to empty. Now you'll notice that I have this minus 4, because I want the length of the string, and we add those FFs at the end. And using the get command adds that P to the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and get the serial port running on this, or the serial monitor running, and then I'll go back to the next gen and pull it up, and we'll see how it works. You're not going to be able to see the data down here because it gets smashed too much, but we'll be able to see it over here, and we'll be able to see it over here. So I haven't connected, I haven't started it yet, but when I do, I'll also reset the display. And you can see the 30 and the 30, and we can see all the A's, and we see the FF's. And they stay in sync. Now I'm going to time lapse this until it stops operating or until we get an error. And here you can, here you can see where it uh, crashes at 1480. So somewhere between 1455 and 1480, it falls apart. As you can see, we get the full string before that. But at this point, even though the next is still counting up, we're no longer getting the data. And it does crash, because if I reset the next you would think when it goes back down to the lower level, it would start to function again. And I'm going to do that now. So now we're back down to zero. But yet, the uh, Arduino is stuck. But if I reset the Arduino now, I'm going to push the button on the Nano. You'll see that it starts up again. So that's just kind of interesting. And the way we're doing it now is a long string. And I feel as if the error is in the Arduino because the connection just keeps on going and it keeps sending the data out. And you can see that in here. Whereas the Arduino doesn't. When the, when the question was first proposed how long a string could be, just off the top of my head, I thought I remembered way back when it could be a normal RS-232 was set to like 200 characters or something like that. But the more I got to thinking about it, it's just data being sent over. If you've got enough memory on both ends, it could be infinitely long. So it appears that there's more memory in the next gen display than there is in a Arduino Pro Mini. If I were to get out a Nano or a Mega or something like that, you could probably send longer strings. And the reason I'm doing this video isn't so much to show you the length of the string. I just thought it was an interesting case where I'm sending the get instead of a print S. We're going to go back and show the other way I did it too, just to do another test. For this first example, I took this VA0, I loaded it with five A's, and then I set this tack this text max length to 8,000. In this case, I'm going to set it just to 5. So all it is is going to be these 5 A's. And instead of sending one long string, I'm going to break it up and send a whole bunch of strings 5 characters long. And we're going to use this VA1 and VA2. They're both numbers, and right now they're both set to 0. I'm going to comment out these lines. What I'm doing is I'm using a for loop. So I'm going to set VA1, this variable down here, equal to VA2. And then as long as VA1 is greater than 0, I'm going to subtract 1 from it. And, I, and every time I subtract 1 from it, I'm going to print the value of VA0, which is 5 A's. And then I'm going to increase VA2. And right down here, I take VA2 dot val plus equal 5. So I'm going to increase it by 5. So in this case, the first time through, it won't run this at all. The next time through, it's going to print this AAA 5As five times. 
and then the next time through it's going to print it 10 times and then 15 times and so it's going to increment by 25 just like the last test but instead of sending one long string it's going to send a whole series of strings and then I want this number 0 to still display the length but now we have to do some interpreting of the length because it's really 5 times 5 so n0 dot val is going to be equal to VA2 which is the value down here but it's really going to be five times that character string so we're going to take n0 dot val and we're going to multiply it times five so that way we get the number of characters but then we're also going to do this get VA0 dot text and that way at the very end we're going to send five extra characters so it has those those trailing FFs so it'll signal to the Arduino to to go ahead and delete everything and display the count of what we have so far. And on the Arduino's end, we shouldn't have to do anything. So I'm going to go ahead and run this now, just like I did before. And you can see the first time through, this was more of an error while I was resetting it. The first time through, we're just going to get those five characters that first get. And the next time through, we're going to put a five sets of A's and we're going to and we're going to finish with the p and then that get command. So the way we ran it before, this p was at the very beginning because the whole thing was the get command. Now it's just putting it at the end. But you can see that the results are the same. In order to make it look a little cleaner, I'm going to stop this, or go back into the Arduino, and get rid of this all these a's. And I simply do that by commenting out this. I'm not going to reset it, I'm just going to let it go from here. And I'll do the same thing, I'll, uh, I'm just going to let this run at this point, and I'll time lapse it. And you can see it happened at the the exact same point it did in the last one. So the issue has to be, or the limitation has to be in the Arduino, I believe, at this point. And if you scroll down and look at the comments, maybe somebody will put something in there that says, yeah, dummy, of course, it's a Pro Mini. It only can be so long or whatever. But the point of this um, video wasn't so much to do that. You can always find a way to send more or less data to the Arduino because you could break it up into multiple sends. You can do lots of different things. It's more to show you in this uh, in the Arduino a use for this part down here. In most of my videos, I don't go into the if dfd dot ends with that sort of statement down there. It's just down there, and I point it out. But this is a case where you're sending just text. You don't know how long it's going to be, and you need some sort of key at the end to let the Arduino know when you're done sending the data. You can also send multiple strings within one string if you have some sort of delimiter in the middle. I'll go back to the next one and show you. But the data would come in, all those A's with the end characters being those three sets of FF, and then you could look for those within here. And right in this area where I'm sending this VA0.txt equals 5 A's, you could change this to like, it could be a B, and then this could be hello or something like that. Then you could use another B down here. Then you could end with like goodbye. And then you could use D as your, or you could use B as your delimiter, and it would send that. And then you could look for those those FFs because you're sending it here at the end or you could combine it all together like we did in this example and then you could break it out in that. I'm not sure if this video answers the question that the person presented in the comment but I thought it was interesting so I went ahead and made the video anyway. Well that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.